She's beautiful. I was calling just to get random reactions to people. I love you. Enjoy New York City. Bye bye, Dustin. I think it's finally time that we reveal the mystery car. But before we reveal it, two years ago when I was in Japan, I filmed a clip where I showed a bunch of cars and I told you guys that one car among the sea of all the vehicles was this car. And I finally decided it is now the time to show you guys what this car is. So without further ado, here's the mystery car. This is my 1998 Evo 5 in dandelion yellow. The Evo 5 was produced from 1998 to 1999 and is celebrated for its performance and rally success. This car was driven by legends like Tommy Mackinnon, who won his fourth consecutive WRC title in 1998. It came with a turbocharged two liter engine, all wheel drive, improved suspension, and aerodynamic enhancements like a larger wing and wider fenders that contributed to its competitive edge. The Evo 5's achievements in the WRC solidified its reputation as a formidable rally car with exceptional power and handling but meant for the street. So I haven't changed this thing at all since I bought it. It's a completely bone stock Evo 5 with a few like little bits like heat shielding on the inside. And obviously there was a huge little uh, envious power mod that the guy did to the whole entire car. We got a bunch of horsepower stickers littered throughout the car. I think some of you might like them, but I think it's absolutely hideous. He got really carried away. This is my favorite one right here. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> it's just like a clear sticker too. <laughs> oh man, I love it. The front is super dope. The rear looks like a camera. The rear will grow on you. Okay. I promise you the rear will grow. Okay. The front's the best part the of the Evo The front's hard. Like when we're talking about appearance. And then I come back here and I'm like, oi. No, 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 no. I promise you, it will grow. I believe you. It will grow. Once it's lowered and it has proper fitment and it has a better idle out the back, it's a four-seater killer. I love it. It's so cool. Ah. <laughs> Please keep it yellow. It, of course. You know how rare the yellow is? I don't know. I, I don't know because it was yellow. I don't know anything, but all I know is that TJ likes gray and white, okay? Look. Boom. It better stay yellow. <laughs> it's going to stay Of course. I. This is this is the best thing about it. The fact that it is yellow. And it's an EO5. Hop in. Gonna Bring two friends. I'm just, I'm just gonna have a seat. Don't Bring two me. friends. Chives, can we go to Chick Fil A, please? I'm gonna interrupt today's video to say thank you to our sponsor, Bespoke Post. I have been a huge fan of this company for a very long time because they truly do have something for everyone. If you live under a rock and you do not know what Bespoke Post is, let me fill you in. It's a monthly membership club that delivers curated products directly to you. And the best part is, is these products are tailored to exactly your interest and your likes. But here's the kicker, Bespoke Post is free to join. And once you join, you get huge discounts to a variety of products, sometimes up to 30% off or more. And with each purchase made off Bespoke Post, small businesses are being supported because over 90% of their products are all from small businesses, which being a small business owner myself, I absolutely love and enjoy that. So all you do is you take a quiz that personalizes your subscription feeds to your interest and in things that you like. So I'm gonna unbox some of the things that I got this month and you guys are gonna get a little look at my interests outside of building cars. We're gonna start here with the carnivore kit. Inside we have some American barbecue rub. Oh damn, that's kind of serious. A butcher knife. All things for grilling. I'm a big cook. I like to make things at home. I like to cook for the boys. And now that summer's coming up, barbecuing is right around the corner. So we got some rub and a meat cleaver. Next up on the chopping block. We got a little mini speaker here. Wireless, shock resistant, waterproof, and dustproof. And a little carrying case. Honestly, this would be a good little thing to bring and put it on our enclosed trailer. We always are listening to music when we're working on cars here. Calvin's always playing his favorite K-pop bands. So whether this lives here in the shop or this is a great little thing to throw into our trailer when we're at the track, bumping some jams, and it being shock resistant, I know that handling it around Dylan's gonna be okay because he likes to be very destructive of things. Last box. Oh, Tuan, this is something you would like. No tie shoelaces, we'll get into that in just a little bit. <laughs> Hydration packs. Always on the go, always being active, whether it's at the racetrack, running around, doing tires, driving cars, or playing a little pickleball and making all my friends upset or just beating them in a game of scramble. Multi-pass sling bag. I look like James from Adam Lz's channel. Always wearing <laughs> his little sling bag. If you're someone who enjoys running, they have a little pack, hydration packs, a little 
no tie shoelaces, and you're ready to rip. And the best part is you get a preview of what's getting sent to you every month. So if you find something that you don't like, or you wanna swap it out for something else, or you wanna skip the month entirely for free, you can at no extra charge. Now I was able to get you guys a 20% off your first monthly box. All you gotta do is use code TJ20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash TJ20. Thank you so much Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to it. Oh, it sounds good. I hope this car will change my perspective on Evos. I wasn't the biggest fan before, but now seeing one in person, look at this guy. Look at him, wilding out. <laughs> he didn't take me to Chick-fil-A. Little rocket ship. This thing is so sick. Hey, watch the seats, it's so expensive. Easy. You should not angle and just see the, the clearance. Okay. All day. Really? All day. Yeah. Eighty thousand kilometers. It's like fifty thousand US miles. That's pretty good. This thing's in really good condition for an Evo five too. Yeah. The Normally the first thing to go is are these little th these like side pockets get a little saggy. The rear's a little saggy. Reminds me of your mom a little bit. But other than that, it's pretty good. That's I'm calling none. That's what you get. I'm calling none. That's what you get for hanging on my seat. I don't need this abuse. Uh, you better get back in the car right now before I tell your mother. Don't you ever slam my door. Ever. The headline is in good condition. Yeah, man. AC is cold. It's icy. This thing is really cool. This thing is super sick. This wheel right here, it's a $4,000 wheel. If you go and you buy it used. Wow. In good condition. Ours is a little bit hammered. We're gonna have to fix that. But this is the World Rally Champion for 1996, 1997, 1998. This car, this chassis. Looks like a piece, bud. Respect your elders, boy, or I'm gonna call your mother. She's on speed dial. <laughs> Back to the turbo timer days. Car's off, key's out. Look at that. Classic, baby. She's a classic. Learn to respect your elders. Don't respect me. Respect. Respect the old cars. This invented it. So we had the guys from Meguiar's come down and do a full paint correction on the car and it came out great. If you really look at it in this light, the paint for being 25 plus years old is amazing, but unfortunately there were some drawbacks. The stickers did leave a little bit of a ghost fade throughout the whole entire car. When we pulled some of the stickers up, they were just so old and tacky that it did pull some of the paint. So ultimately we're gonna have to do a respray on this whole entire car, which definitely isn't ideal, but it being dandelion yellow, I want it to be absolutely superb, but that's the risk you take with buying old cars. Some of the plastics and metal faded differently there's even some areas where we noticed that we were burning through it too quickly. So it didn't leave us a lot of room to save the paint and remove clear to get it all back to the same color. A respray will be coming soon. Ah, he finally brought it home, huh? What do you think? Dude, that yellow is absolutely sick. Let me get it, let me get it back to you. I can't, we're in the... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Time, baby. Later, Congratulations, that. TJ, on your brand new car. Ah, I'm so proud of you. Team Valvoline, let's go. Yo, have you had this thing for like a while? I had it before you, you chotch. No, I got mine like two years before yours. It was just in Australia. <laughs> we were filming reactions to people and I was like, I know Adam has this car, so I'm going to call him and see what he says. I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to be like, I have mine before you. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's sick, dandelion, baby. You show me yours, I'll show you mine. The, the five guys are back. They're, they're just not Grant and Adam and me. It's now me, you, and Adam. No yeah, Grant. the dream team. The dream team. That's the real dream team right there. Holy shit. It... Insane. She's beautiful. I was calling just to get random reactions to people. I love you. Enjoy New York City. Bye bye, Dustin. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This car is a rally car. So yeah, you don't even need to angle. I'm not. Go a, straight. I don't. Okay. Dude, there's so much space. It must be nice. Now, don't fall in love with this car. Oh, it's. I know it's you're about to. It's adorable. I like red hand drive a lot. <laughs> Look at this. We got someone in the back seat. This is cool, honestly. Oh, 
faster than my BRZ for sure. Dude, I don't know what it is about a four-door. Oh, four-door cars are sick. You know who doesn't have a cool four-door car? Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for everyone who has that car that's watching this video. Hey! <laughs> Nate got like 24K spring rates on all four. Why? Because he's like, oh, I'm gonna have such a stancy fitment. I don't want it to ever like rub. What a loser. And I was like, Nate, you're gonna regret that. And he was like, no, that's what I want. Stancy fitment? And he regrets it dramatically. All right, now that Calvin the grandpa's not driving. Yeah, show me what this okay, car's made dude. of. Time to give you boys a real rip. I'm with slim. three adults in the car. Dude, when this thing is built and has its turbo and just making that 400 horsepower, this thing's gonna be an absolute ripper. Ever since I drove the GTR at Laguna, I've just been like dreaming about going and tracking another car, which there's actually some stuff coming up very soon. So stay posted for that. Finally, the M4 GT3 is gonna see the track. It's gonna be good. Apart from the 911 we're building right now, I bought this car with the intention of like oh, making wait. it a full like grip monster and making it very like purpose built for the track. So everything we're gonna be doing to this is in mind to be like grip suitable. oriented. Yeah, yeah, grip oriented for the track. It's not about making a high horsepower number for the street. Yeah. Everything is going to be track focused. Since I've had this car for so long, I've also been stacking a bunch of parts in this car. I actually have everything for this car in my possession right now. And I've been collecting a bunch of super rare stuff that you do not see on these cars. And Evo 5s really aren't that popular to begin with. So it makes it really difficult to find the super rare stuff that you don't normally see just because there's really not a lot of them. So I'm really excited. In the next episode, we're gonna dive straight into modifying this car step by step. But it should go relatively quickly because we have everything. Literally down to harness, ECU, down to every sensor, to our turbo, to our manifold, literally everything. So this is kind of like a baseline test, but this car is very stock. So there's really not too much to compare it to, but it doesn't feel bad. That's a really cool thing about this car is it feels like it was kept very, very well. Okay. That was floored one to three. That's not Calvin, terrible. Calvin's asleep Wait, in the bag. Asleep. Oh my God. But I mean like, it's, oh, it's pretty tight. tight. It's tight. It just feels pretty gutless. Like I'm floored. Turbo really doesn't do anything until about 4,000 RPM. Yeah, you start to feel it right there. But you can heel toe so well on this car. It's so awesome. Some cars, the way their pedals are set up, you can't really reach that well. The Evo, it just feels like it was meant Make to heel toe that. and it being yeah. like a world rally champion chassis. I don't know, all that stuff like, feels good to know or it, it feels good thinking like they thought about that in mind not sure yeah. if they actually actually did oh my my drink oh, <laughs> i was like what just nailed the back of my seat my arizona bro oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> I want to give you guys a look on the inside of the car because I'm really, really impressed with it. A lot of the cars that are just this old or that we import normally have interiors that are pretty hammered, but this one's actually really good. The, the real problem cause with these interiors is on the doors. These door cars, as you can kind of see, like start to sag a little bit and the adhesive starts to fall off. This type of material, like this like pattern is on all four doors. Ours are a little bit loose, but they're not that bad. I would say this is like a six out of 10 when I feel like most of them are like three or four out of 10. So that's an easy fix. But other than that, the interior, the plastics, perfect. We're not missing anything. The AC blows cold. There's an aftermarket head unit here that doesn't have Bluetooth, but it even has these rally art gauges, which are super sick. Has a turbo timer, which is pretty cool. I've never had a car with a turbo timer. And, and the best part of the interior is it came with this world champion OMP wheel. This is a pretty pricey wheel. If you try to buy it online, it's like four grand in like perfect condition. Ours is pretty beat up, but we can fix that. We can make this thing look brand new again. Very cool to have this wheel. The seats are in pretty fair condition as well. There's a little bit of wearing down by like the bolstering, but Apart from that, one of the nicer interiors I've gotten from a car that I've imported that is this old. So after driving this thing a little bit around the street, my main takeaways are this reminds me a lot of my GTR before we built it. In the sense that it's slow on the street, it doesn't have much excitement, but when I drive it, I can feel that it has good bones in it. I can feel that when this thing has an extra 150 horsepower, when it has better suspension, when it has better brakes, when it has better tires, how fun this car could really be. And with the original goal of this thing being a more time attack build, a more grip car build, I'm really excited for this to be that car and kind of fill that role because I had a blast just driving around the street, 
just ripping through like first and fourth gear. I can only imagine it with a better turbo setup, a better manifold, and just a better tune. It's gonna absolutely rip, and it gets me excited because there's not a lot of cars that I get excited about in stock form, and I could feel the potential out of this car, and I almost, calling it now, this might rival my GTR in the sense that out of all my JDM cars, nothing beats the R34 GTR. That is the best driving experience meaning like the platform itself of the R34 is so great in so many ways. And then with all the performance mods you can do, that car is just perfect. It is the definition of perfect when it comes to JDM. I think that this car will give that car a run for its money. I know it's not as fast. I know it's not gonna be a multi hundred thousand dollar car, but I believe that this will be an absolute joy to drive every day if you wanted to do it. And I'm excited to finally be an Evo owner. I know there's a lot of you out there. I get comments all the time and messages to build an Evo. I don't know if you guys expected an Evo 5, but something about it when I saw it years ago, I was like, that is so cool. And I knew that it would get more expensive over time. So I'm glad I picked one up way back when. I think I picked this car up for low 20s. So they're like 35 and up now. So. So far, a pretty good investment. All the Evo owners out there, leave some comments down below of some things that I should do. Now granted, I have the full entire build for this already that we're gonna start jumping into. And on the next episode, we're gonna dive into suspension. We're gonna dive into exhaust. I'm gonna reveal all of these rare pieces that I got from this car that I know a lot of you guys who really care about these cars are absolutely gonna love. But leave some feedback. Are there some do's and don'ts? Is there something that I absolutely need to do with the 4G63 that some people skip out on? I'm gonna be leaning on you guys for that information. But I hope you enjoyed the mystery car reveal. I've had this up on the lift for so long. I've been teasing you guys so long with this car and I'm glad I finally got to share it with you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode where we start building this thing. And we're gonna do a lot in the next episode. So we're gonna do a lot in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you boys next time. Peace out and keep moving forward.